Hi, this is Russell Scabetti with the first video blog post for thebusinessofsports.com. I'm going to try to mix in the occasional video blog along with all the other articles that we write for the site just to have some fun, mix things up, and uh, see if people enjoy this as well. Uh, earlier today, I was thinking about a topic that I think a lot of sports organizations have to deal with, um, and that's the, the conflict and the challenges that exist between good business practice and delivering on customer expectations versus what's best for team development, specifically when it comes to resting players, players that customers expect to see when they purchase tickets to the game or watch the games on television. There have been a few examples of these, of these situations over the last couple of years that have been somewhat controversial and caused problems. A couple of years ago, there were several NBA teams that were resting all of their best players towards the end of the season when they were out of the playoff race with the hope of getting a better draft pick. Um, this has also happened with teams that are very successful and have already clinched a top seed. Uh, for example, this came up with the Cavaliers this year where they had already clinched the number one seed and rested LeBron James the last game or two of the year and some fans were and customers were upset about that. Most recently, this also happened when it came uh, in regards to player injuries. Steven Strasburg, which has been a tremendous lift for player attendance for the Washington Nationals, at the last minute was pulled from one of his starts for some shoulder soreness. Maybe with other players they would have let him play through it, but with someone as important as Strasburg, they decided to rest him. However, there's a dramatic difference with the number of customers that the Nationals have when he's pitching versus when he's not, and this left a lot of customers disappointed. So there, there is this dynamic, this challenge between what's best for the team development and what the business side of the of the team has promised to his customers and what they expect when they buy tickets to the games. Now, some organizations will take the position that it's buyer beware. You know, it's part of the expectations if you buy tickets, you're buying tickets for the team and whatever happens happens. But that's kind of a short-sighted way of looking at it. I think the important thing that teams need to consider when dealing with these situations is managing customer expectations and being open and honest and communicating as much as possible. Um, I have a couple of, of additional thoughts and ideas that I think can, can help that. First of all, you have to realize who your customers are. Um, in this situation, you have your season ticket holders who have invested a great deal of money over the whole season and have certain expectations of the value of their seats. You have single game buyers who may specifically only be buying tickets for that particular opponent or that particular game based on who they expect to see and their expectations, they might be disappointed. And then you have the fans at home who are watching on television who are building up long-term value and, and, and a relationship with your team, even if they're not buying tickets as of yet. Um, all these audiences are very important, both for the short-term transaction of buying their tickets and the long-term value they represent as a fan of your organization. Um, so I have a couple of tactics that I think could assist in these situations that teams can keep in mind to hopefully keep this from being a bigger problem, just like I said, managing expectations for your fans and customers. The first one is uh, you can't really, some people might want to discount the ticket. If you know that certain players aren't playing, like you're an NFL team and you're resting your starters in week 17, you can't go ahead and discount your ticket. The problem there is is you're undercutting the value of the product and there there's long-term revenue problems that that generates and perception problems. However, what you can do is add value to the experience. Take a, take a situation where a football team uh, is already clinched their playoff spot and has, has one more game to go. What a great opportunity for the team to add additional value onto the tickets. A lot of teams use barcoded tickets where they can put value on for food and merchandise. If the team expects that certain players aren't going to play and they might have some perception problems, people might be annoyed they don't get to see their favorite players, well, make it up to them. Make it a fan appreciation night and give them a little value. Let them come away from the game with something extra, even though they didn't get to see the player they specifically wanted to see. It'll, it'll improve your fan experience without much cost. The other important thing is also advance communications as much as possible um, to, to manage the perceptions. Let them know that certain players might not be available. Um, in the cases where a team is playing a lot of young players and resting their starters towards the end of the season because it doesn't matter, sell your fans. Explain to them. Be honest with them that they're developing the future of their organization. Highlight these young players that are that you're working on and, and build interest in them. You can sell that aspect of sports just as much as you can almost any other aspect of the players on your team and, and what your fans are coming to see. 
Now you have to balance that a little bit. You can't be too honest because you don't want to do anything that can hinder team development. You don't want to put messaging out there that you know certain players are going to rest because the opposing team can, can uh, change their strategy accordingly. But some form of honest communication with your customers is definitely appreciated and gets in front of those problems before they turn into problems. Um, finally, uh, finally, there's also the, the idea of how you communicate this message. You can communicate messages via email. You can communicate a message via phone blast. So take an example where, where an NBA team is going to rest their starters. Maybe um, your star player, you do a recorded voicemail of your star player and send that out to all of your season ticket holders, thanking them, knowing that he's not going to be there, but he can still encourage the players to come, come to the next game, have a great experience. Maybe he'll be around signing autographs, something where he can still be a part of the experience and, and the players communicating with the customers, even if they don't get to see him on the court. Doing these different types of things really gets in front of the problem. It really handles customer expectations in a positive way rather than letting the negativity of who they're not seeing you know, take over their judgment. Um, I'm sure if you have other ideas on what thing teams uh, can do to help handle these situations, leave a comment below. Um, one of the reasons things I love about this blog is that it's all about sharing best practices and giving ideas back and forth. So please share your thoughts. And while I've got you, hopefully you're still watching, I've got a couple of quick announcements. Hopefully by now you've seen that we've uh, scheduled our next New York networking night. That's going to be Wednesday, August 18th, so it's just over a week from now. If you're in the New York area, this is a great chance to come out and connect with some industry professionals. We normally get uh, over 150 people at, all the, at our New York events, so uh, I hope to see you out there. Uh, we also just started last week a new weekly series called the Sports Biz Candidate of the Week. This is an opportunity to, for me to feature someone who's got great experience, can really provide value for a sports organization, but might not, might not be working with anyone at this moment. Uh, I featured a, a great guy named Mario Prosperino in my post on Friday. Definitely take a look at his experience. And if you're interested in being a future Sports Biz Candidate of the Week, um, there's a link on there where you can uh, just fill out a fairly small form, and uh, hopefully next sometime down the road you can be one of our candidates of the week. And finally, also for those job seekers out there, we have I have a special offer from WorkInSports.com. Uh, if you use the promo code SportsBiz, that's Sports B I Z, one word, you can get a buy one month, get one month free offer from uh, from our friends over at WorkInSports.com. So thanks for watching this. Thanks for visiting the site, and hopefully this is the first of uh, several video blogs to come. And uh, thanks for visiting the Business of Sports.com.